Over the last 20 years, I've watched most of the Western factories close and shift their production to Asia in search of cheaper labor. We found at Allied Cycle Works to take a different path. If we're going to launch a new brand, we're going to make it here in the United States. We're going to make it ourselves. We're going to be the most open, honest, and transparent bike brand out there. We're going to show everyone how carbon fiber bicycles are made. It's time for a change. So here we are, we're in the uh, cutting room. Uh, in here we roll in uh, material from our freezer, which is uh, pre-preg produced in uh, Irvine, California. And uh, we roll it up onto this uh, 2D kind of platter table to CNC cutter. And we cut out all the unique shapes for an alpha frame and fork. So after uh, many, many months of development, uh, what you end up with is a ply manual. And that ply manual has uh, all the shapes that you're supposed to cut and exactly where you're supposed to put them. You can see on this screen, you've got every single uh, section of the bike, um, the front triangle, and all those sections are nested into these tables to cut the material as efficiently as possible. Um, all these ply shapes are super important to the performance of the bike, to the reliability, um, to get us the weight we want to meet the targets um, that we would expect for the Alpha. You know, on a bicycle you have really complex curvature. There's a lot of stuff going on. If you tried to drape um, a rectangle over some of this complex curvature, it, would, it just would not do the job. Okay, now from here, we're gonna take these kids, hand them off into layup, and uh, wash some laminates and parts. All right, so here we are in layup. Layup is our biggest team. It's also um, the sort of longest process, longest step in our process. Um, it takes a, a lot of work, a lot of hours in order to take um, what we saw back there from the cutting room and to get it into a form like this is one of these tools. And for the complex curves like this, it's very, it becomes very complicated to roll that over the top of a, uh, a male mandrel. So we're actually laying these into uh, these female halves and then connecting them into, um, into final preforms. So here we have head tube preform. Looks something like that. This one is uh, completed, ready for final assembly. And then here we have a uh, seat tube preform, also ready for final assembly. So the carbon that we use is almost, almost entirely uh, unidirectional prepreg. Uh, what you've got is uh, very, very good properties in one direction. I pull on this super hard, nothing's happening. Um, that's the direction of the fiber. In the other direction, it just comes apart. That's the resin that's holding it together. You've got stresses obviously for strength, also for the stiffness and the performance of the bike. So every single ply, everything is critical and the placement is critical. Every one of those plies, like I was saying, in digital format. In that digital form, it ends up into a ply manual like this. It shows the ply itself and also exactly where it's going to be plied as well as you know all the information that you would need to know about that ply. So the, form, the FE model, the, the layup table, and these ply books are all controlled by one master document. So there's no errors, there's no sort of lost in communication from one thing to the next. try to draw as much air out of laminate as possible. So trapped air inside of a laminate's uh, a big issue. Uh, it can be inner laminar where it causes strength issues, or it can be on the surface where it causes cosmetic issues and some strength issues. So really, the idea of the debulk is to uh, let it sit in there as long as possible to be able to draw as much of that air out as possible. We've got it fully envelope bag. We're gonna roll it into this oven elevate the temperature slightly to allow the resins to kind of soften up a little bit. And we're gonna apply that vacuum to be able to draw air out. So now these have come out of the debulk. 
And uh, we're gonna remove the, the envelope bag and then pop it into the presses for a final cure where they'll get, uh, these platins are each heated to about 130, to 130 degrees Celsius. Um, and then we're going to uh, apply pressure into the bags uh, based on the temperature that's uh, on the tool. And this is a fully cured 56 centimeter uh, front triangle. And you can see again, we've got all the resin flashes. We got really nice, even resin distribution along this down tube, which is great. So like you saw before in curing and then lay up, we do the front triangle as one part, um, and then we do seat states as individual parts and uh, chain states as individual parts. Um, this is where they're all joined together. So we're using uh, you know, a nice uh, 3M epoxy DP420 compatible with our resin system. We bond them here in these ample jigs according to the geometry. So what we're trying to do here is just improve what we would call the green strength. Uh, so the idea is assemble this thing on here, hit it with the infrared lamps, um, get the green strength up to where we can get this thing off in about 15, 20 minutes uh, on the jig, and then have this thing move on to the next process closer to being a, uh, a full frame. The sanding and in paint prep area is where we do the drillings for the water bottle cages, we do the drillings for the front derailleur mounts, and we also drill and bond in all of the cable management systems on the bike. Right here, Randy's giving a final sand on the bond joint to make sure that it's perfectly smooth and ready for paint. This bike's now been sanded down to get rid of all sort of the excess glue from the bond areas. Um, in all these molded parts, there's a, a, a bond joint sort of designed into it. Um, and including that bond joint is a little half millimeter step for an overwrap. One, it actually is a structural component. So you'll see Olivia will be wrapping zero degree plies around this. Zeros are very strong in bending. Um, so it does add something to the structure. So the overwrap serves two purposes. You know, there is some structural benefit, but really it's to uh, minimize any paint cracking. It's a different color. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. I don't like it's a lot more. When it comes to paint, the color palette is essentially infinite. Um, where in the print world, you have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, four base colors. In the paint world, there are 64 separate toners that we use to start from. Uh, there are dyes, pearls, uh, and different uh, levels of gloss, metallic, uh, iridescence, flop. Uh, so, much broader palette to work from. It's important to apply this color very evenly and not too much. Can't back up too much color. So that's it. That's what we do here at Allied Cycle Works. From raw material through every step of the manufacturing process, finishing with paint, start to finish, right here in the United States. Thank you guys very much for your time.